So Tamara Lopez, you are a spokesperson for the International Day of Pink. And how is it different than Pink T-shirt Day in February? Sure. So thank you very much, first of all, for having me on uh, the show, Nikki. I really appreciate it. Uh, the way that it differs in that is that the individual that created Day of Pink was inspired by what happened with Pink Shirt Day, which, as we know, in February is more of an anti-bullying campaign. And they wanted to ensure that we do focus, too, on bullying that happens within the 2S LGBTQIA plus community. And I think that that's what was missing from the particular Pink Shirt Day. This year's campaign theme is Represent. The t-shirts that we do have, they were designed by a good friend, Sunny Fong. What uh, they say is, I thought this could be an inspirational graphic tee for everyone to be their best authentic self, representing their culture, their identity, their beliefs, and themselves. And so we want to talk about how we can believe on April the 13th, how you represent, showing that you represent, whether it be the community, represent that you are also an ally, which we know to be an action term. So just representing that we want to be inclusive represent diversity because again I come to you as different parts of my intersectionality so how that looks represented and we want to make sure we're representing of course acceptance and that's what the ultimate goal here of any sort of campaign especially for the uh, the 2S LGBTQIA community is for acceptance. We've come a long way I would like to think in the last 10 years with anti-bullying campaigns and that sort of thing however the the community doesn't necessarily think of all of the things that that are are still sort of like microaggressions. We've come a long way in regards to a lot of individuals or groups that are disenfranchised. And microaggressions are still going to exist because discrimination and stereotypes are still a thing that we need to be able to deconstruct. And so if someone were to look at me and I fall in, for example, I have called myself a gay woman before, and someone will look at me as a microaggression and say, well, you're too good looking to be gay. And I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to mean because whatever their stereotypical image might be completely false and incorrect. So the more we have these conversations to break down what a stereotype is and why stereotypes are wrong and then discriminations and prejudicial beliefs, that is how we're able to have conversations about bullying because we want to make sure people understand like where that all stems from in the first place. And with the microaggressions, making comments that, oh, do you also wear Birkenstocks? A terrible stereotype. So we want to make sure people understand that these are not terms you're supposed to say. These are things you don't say to other people. You wouldn't say it to your other friends that might identify, for example, as straight or heterosexual. So why do you feel that it's okay to yeah. say it to another community like this? Absolutely. But the unfortunate use of, of the word gay in a derogatory sense, like, oh, that's so gay. Well, that's not okay. Like that's, that's bullying. Yes, the it's not. I had actually a thing I started at my workplace that called it's not OK to say. And that was one of the things, because I know that Wanda Sykes did a really cool skit one time where she heard a group say, oh, my God, that's so gay. And she's like, actually, that's so heterosexual teenage boy with a bad mustache. And it's true because you never say, oh, well, that's so hetero. Why do you feel it's OK to then take uh, someone's identity and how they uh, their sexual orientation and their maybe their how they express themselves and use that as. A derogatory term but then that's how we're furthering the stereotypes by classifying something as well i'm not doing that because it's gay isn't helping people better understand the community and better understand how they can be how they can do their part so when you see something you should definitely say something that's how we make those changes and you just came from speaking with some elementary school students what was that like you know looking at the next generation do you see hope for equality and and acceptance a hundred percent. I think that the generation that's coming up now, the world has changed so much and they are really moving forward and pushing those boundaries and those envelopes and definitely their voices are being heard. And even just looking at some of the books that are available to the youth today didn't exist. I feel when I was a youth growing up, books on Joey has two mommies. Unbelievable to see that these books are there, but people are now having these conversations a lot earlier because we don't want people to feel the shame and the guilt that maybe generations before and my generation would have felt. We want people to know that they can talk about it openly, that there are safe spaces that they can go to. The, the conversations that went on uh, with the school were amazing. I had great feedback from the, the teachers and even a student asked me a question. And it was nice to be having that engaging conversation because Again, when I was growing up, you could barely talk about stuff between two straight adults as opposed to other communities, too. Right. So the world is definitely shifting and changing. And I think 
that's how we're going to push it forward more is this generation up and coming is definitely not going down quietly at all. And that is amazing to see the work that we've done in the past, moving this now towards a better and brighter future of, again, that more acceptance and more inclusivity. I have to ask, what did the student ask you? They asked me a question about uh, how someone would identify if they were trans. It was, a, I couldn't answer the question 100% because I told the person that every single person's experience is individual. So I'm not going to label someone what I think the category they would fall into. That is for that person to tell you how they would identify and what their sexual orientation would be based on what their gender identity would be. Because the typical definitions that we knew growing up, they're not the same anymore and they've evolved so much. And I think it's important that we start making the conversation more individualistic anyway. So instead of me saying she, her, him, his, I'm gonna ask the person, you know, what are your preferred pronouns? Or how do you identify? Instead of me making that assumption like we did in the past, it is about involving the person, first person narrative, because it's their own individual experience and I can't tell them what their orientation is or how they should identify. And that's why I told the student, and I think they understood, teacher thanked me because it's like, it's true, you can't give an answer because it's very individual and it's that person's experience. 